This indictment was voted by a grand jury of citizens in the Southern District of Florida. And I invite everyone to read it in full, to understand the scope and the gravity of the crimes charged. No, I wouldn't waste my time on a phony indictment. I don't care about the indictment. indictment. You could, hey, you could indict a baloney sandwich. Well, unless you've been living under a rock for the past week or so, then by now I am confident that you're well aware of the fact that Donald Trump has been federally indicted on 38 charges last Thursday. Now, for this video, I primarily want to focus on the response from his supporters because I think that that portion of this story is yielding really important insight that a lot of people aren't picking up on that we all need to be well aware of. But before we get to that, I first want to just talk about the charges a little bit here because I just I can't overstate the severity of of these charges and when you go through the indictment itself it is genuinely mind-blowing so as common dreams explains the indictment which journalist judd legum described as absolutely devastating outlines that trump faces 31 counts related to withholding national defense information additionally he and nada this is his former aide face five counts related to concealing possession of classified documents they also each face a count related to making false statements to the federal bureau of investigation the indictment accuses trump of showing classified materials to people who lacked security clearance to see them at least twice at his golf club in New Jersey. The first time was in July of 2021 during an audio recorded meeting with a writer, a publisher, and two members of his staff. The former president showed and described a plan of attack that Trump said was prepared for him by the Department of Defense and a senior military official, according to the document. Trump told the individuals that the plan was highly confidential and secret. Trump also also said, as president, I could have declassified it, and now I can't, you know, but this is still a secret. Then, in August or September of 2021, Trump allegedly showed a representative of his political action committee a classified map related to a military operation, told the unnamed individual that he should not be doing so, and said not to get too close. So, let's just pause right there, because there's a lot to take in. It's not just that he kept lots and lots of documents at Mar-a-Lago. And there are photographs included in the indictment of dozens of boxes, all of which containing classified materials. But it's not just that he kept this and he didn't give it back. He showed people. And on top of that, he's showing them saying, I really shouldn't be showing you this, but I'm doing it anyway. And there's evidence of this. These conversations are detailed in the indictment. And putting aside the fact that he literally willingly shared this information with people when he knew he shouldn't be doing that, he literally kept information about the United States' strategic vulnerabilities and actual fucking nuclear secrets, possibly in his bathroom. And to make matters worse, as CNN's Caitlin Collins points out, the indictment shows specifically how he was trying to obstruct in this case by, quote, suggesting that his attorney hide or destroy documents called for by the grand jury subpoena. I mean, even by Donald Trump's standards of idiocy, Brazen doesn't even begin to describe it. His own former attorney general is saying, actually, he may be toast. That's Bill Barr's words, not mine. And also saying that the indictment would still be damning even if only half of it were true. Now, listen, I understand that in this country, we essentially have a two-tier justice system that almost always pays deference to elites, but Trump was so shameless in his disregard for the law that they're just going to pretend as if he's a normal person. They're trying him as a normal person in this case. Now, that's a joke, obviously, but for an elite to actually be held accountable legally, for a former president to be indicted... What he did has to be pretty bad. The evidence has to be substantial. And in this case, yeah, that's that's certainly the case. I can confirm. The question is, are the crimes bad enough to get his supporters to turn on him? I think you know the answer to that question. It's obviously no. But a CNN reporter spoke with Trump supporters outside of Georgia's GOP convention that took place over the weekend. And what they said really is not surprising. But keep in mind that what these Trump supporters are saying is actually less problematic than what some of his other supporters are doing and more specifically planning. But before we get to that, let's watch. Special counsel Jack Smith announcing 37 criminal counts against Trump, the majority for violations of the Espionage Act. 
doesn't matter to me. Not at all. Outside the state convention, his supporters are unfazed. I think it's a bunch of bull. Trump ain't done that wrong thing. Trump done is it saved this country. They're not going to let it stop. Mm -hmm. They can't stand the fact that he's running for president. And I am a Donald Trump fan. It's uh, probably altered, um, but it's just typical, typical uh, liberal propaganda. None of the Republican voters CNN spoke with had read the indictment. No, I wouldn't waste my time on a phony indictment. I don't care about the indictment. indictment. You could, hey, you could indict a baloney sandwich. These loyalists share a deep sense of distrust against perceived opponents of Trump, including the Department of Justice, the FBI, and the press. Supporters routinely brought up President Joe Biden, former Vice President Mike Pence, and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton. All had sensitive materials in their possession while out of public office. One big difference, Trump and his aide, Walnata, face nearly a half dozen charges related to obstruction and concealment of documents, including for allegedly suggesting to his lawyers to not cooperate with a grand jury subpoena. In this whole fake indictment, they don't even once mention the presidential Records Act. The indictment outlines two different occasions Trump allegedly showed classified documents to unauthorized people. And in 2021, Trump admitted on tape to having secret documents that he hadn't declassified, according to the indictment. As president, I could have declassified, but now I can't, Trump said, according to the transcript of the audio obtained by CNN. There's an audio recording of him doing so. We know that that can be changed. We know that that can be altered. Within the 49-page indictment, pictures showing boxes of classified documents stacked high in a Mar-a-Lago bathroom, ballroom, office space, and elsewhere. What he did is incorrect, absolutely incorrect. But the system allowed it to happen. The system is broken. It needs to be fixed. The convention also drew a handful of anti-Trump protesters, co-opting one of his most popular catchphrases in this quick moment of tension. Yeah. Lock you up. Yeah, you yeah, had you support yeah. Hillary Clinton. She done a lot wrong. Uh, you're an idiot. Ultimately, these Trump supporters could not point to any piece of evidence that would cause their support to waver. I think Trump is the best president we've ever had, and I'm all about getting him reelected. That was depressing, but at this point, it's not surprising because I've said it once, I'll say it again. This is a cult. Now, to be fair, we all have biases. We all feel cognitive dissonance when someone we like does something bad. Having said that, though, I don't think any of you watching are as bad as those supporters, regardless of who we're talking about here. I doubt that most sane people would put blind loyalty above facts and logic in the way that Trump supporters allow blind loyalty to Trump facts and logic, pun intended. For example, like just, just think about a recent example where we all were tested. Noam Chomsky, beloved intellectual on the left, we all learned that he was friendly with Jeffrey Epstein and the response from him was, mm, none of your business. Now, ask yourself this question. Even as disappointed as you were when you read these headlines about Noam Chomsky, did you throw your hands up and scream witch hunt or refuse to admit that this wasn't at least suspicious at a minimum? No. Because you're an adult, and as adults, we have the emotional capacity to adapt with new information, and we all had to grapple with the reality that Noam Chomsky perhaps isn't as good of a person as we all thought, even if no crime is being alleged specifically with regard to that issue. But still, this association with a human trafficker, a known human trafficker, it just, you would expect better from Noam Chomsky. Did you just throw a temper tantrum and accuse the journalist who broke that story of being corrupt or biased? No. But Trump supporters, they don't have the capacity to reason in the same way that we all do. But as depressing as their reluctance to accept any facts about uh, Trump may be, those are the least problematic of the bunch because there are... 
the normal rank and file members of Trump's cult, which are the ones that we just saw. And then there are the violent members of Trump's cult who take things to the extreme. Let me tell you what I mean by that. As Vice News explains, in what is becoming a now all too familiar trend, former President Donald Trump's far right supporters have threatened civil war after news broke Thursday that the former president was indicted for allegedly taking classified documents from the White House without permission. Quote, we need to start killing these traitorous fuck stains, wrote one Trump supporter on the Donald, a rapidly pro-Trump message board that played a key role in planning the January 6th attack on the Capitol. Another user added, it's not going to stop until bodies start stacking up. We are not civilly represented anymore, and they'll come for us next. Some of us, they already have. Trump supporters are making specific threats, too. In one post on the Donald titled, A Little Bit About Merrick Garland, His Wife, His Daughters, a user shared a link to an article about the Attorney General's children. Under the post, another user replied, His children are fair game as far as I'm concerned. Quote, It's perhaps time for that civil war that the damn Democrats have been trying to start for years now, a member of the Donald wrote. Another, referencing former President Barack Obama and former Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, said, Fact, our forefathers would have hung these two for treason. Now, as a result of all of this, law enforcement officials are on high alert, fearing another January 6th on the date of his arraignment. And it doesn't help that Trump keeps lying about the situation and stoking the flames by trying to portray himself as the victim of a politically motivated witch hunt, when very clearly, if you look at the details here, it's obvious that that is not the case, right? You know, if you read the actual indictment, I think that it would be difficult to not conclude that this man isn't just guilty, but he is as guilty as you can possibly be. But that's why facts and logic, it's so important because these Trump supporters think, well, you know, Donald Trump, if they can come after a former president, then of course they'll come after his supporters. But the difference is that most of the time in this country, elites get away with crimes that the peasants would get prosecuted for doing immediately. And Trump, in this instance, he wasn't just keeping classified documents. He was showing them off to his friends saying, this is totally classified. Don't get too close. Like he knew what he was doing. But because of these very strong narratives that are deceitful on purpose intended to gin up support for Trump, these people think that if it starts with Trump, it's going to end with them, when that's not going to be the case unless you actually resort to violence or do something as brazen as Trump did. I mean, if you actually are storing these classified documents containing nuclear secrets at your private resorts, then, uh, yeah, you know, maybe, maybe they'll come for you next. But if you haven't been doing that, I don't think that you have anything to worry about. With regard to things that the peasants should be, uh, should be worried about, I mean, it's the militarization of police, how we are losing our First Amendment rights in this country in various states with the criminalization of protests, book banning. These are things that you should worry about with regard to the state cracking down on our civil rights and civil liberties. But for them, they see one elite get penalized, potentially held accountable, and they think, oh, my God, I'm next. No, this is why informing ourselves with facts and details are really important. But Regardless of what happens to Trump, one thing is very clear. His supporters are never, ever going to abandon him, and I think that most of us have come to terms with that reality. But the particularly worrying element about this story is how many Trump supporters immediately started to call for violence and a civil war after this news broke. News that we all expected for months, by the way. But let's zoom out a little bit and look at the broader political landscape with regard to the American right. We have Trump supporters proving that they're willing to resort to violence. They did it on January 6th, and they're plotting it again. You have genocidal rhetoric coming from many sitting politicians across the country when it comes to trans issues. And we have out and proud neo-Nazis who have repeatedly shown support for candidates like Ron DeSantis. Here's a picture of them protesting outside of Disney World this weekend. And none of this is happening in a vacuum. Trump may have ushered in this era of political violence, but it's not going to end with Donald Trump's political career, assuming that all of this legal turmoil is going to bring him down. So the point is that as a country, we need to recognize the danger of an increasingly violent far right in this country and buckle up because this is only the beginning of the right's devolution from proto-fascists to outright violent fascists. And as 
political news drops, this is something that I want people to pay attention to. The threats of violence that we are seeing increasingly. I mean, you don't have to look to the Donald to find evidence that the right is violence. All you have to do is log on to Twitter and you'll see many blue check Nazis calling for the deaths of LGBTQ plus people, calling for political violence. It is a common phenomenon now. And seeing it this much is a very worrying sign for the future of democracy. So it's something to keep in mind and pay attention to. Penis and balls, vagina. Penis and balls, vagina. P-word and balls, vagina. P-word and balls, vagina. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.